So this uh, greetings, intro. everybody. We are playing Okami. Steve, you need to Hi. shut up when I do an intro. No. Uh, Steve has never played this before. We are playing the HD Remix on PC. So be ready for that, everyone. Yay! All right, Mr. start us up. Orange. Start us up, Steve. All right. Before you see anything important. Okami. Yeah, I've never played this game. I've always wanted to, actually. Oh yeah, this game was. Phenomenal. That's what back, I've heard. Back when, um, hit buttons. So if I remember correctly, no, I guess not. The the loading screen did not have the uh, the game. No mini games. No. Story. Hideki Kamiya. It's like credits before the game. Um, probably. That's kind of cool. Or or no no no. The story is by Hideki Kamiya. Right. Yeah. Long, long ago, a tiny hamlet known as Kamiki lay nested in a grove of proud and beautiful cherry blossoms. Each and every tree around the quiet park was honored as a god. However, the village was not without its dark secrets. Ooh. Oh shit! The Shimada brothers! To satiate the appetite of Orochi, a fearsome dwell cave dwelling beast, a young maiden was offered as a sacrifice at the annual festival. Now, I have to ask, because mm -hmm. um, I don't know a lot about like traditional Japanese uh, folk tales and stuff like uh -huh. that, but I see this kind of story repeated a lot, especially amongst like. Japanese and Chinese folk tales. Yeah. Um, is there actually like such a like folklore or whatever around this concept? So I forget what it's called, but there is a Japanese term that basically means a sacrifice. Uh huh. Uh, and essentially, what it means is that there is a person who is chosen as a sacrifice to appease a spirit or a a a deity right um from being angry um usually it's a maiden usually they are clean and untouched okay uh but what they usually do and this is kind of uh fucked up is they will have the maiden go to where they are supposed to be sacrificed and sometimes if it is an unwilling sacrifice they will break their arms and legs Ooh. and leave them there to die. Oh, geez. Uh, other times, the maiden is given as a sacrifice and put into a cave, and then the cave is sealed until right. the next off offering is supposed to go. And what will happen is, is when the next offering is supposed to go, they'll unseal it, like, bury the remains inside there. Right. Or hide them. And then reseal it. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, sacrifice, human sacrifices were a really big thing in uh, Japanese lore, unfortunately. They were, they're actually pretty big in a lot of uh, cultures. Yeah. It's, like it, it's, a, lot it's of... a strange like correlation that yeah. they all share. It's like the spirit of the, of, you know, the living or, or the, the offering of living flesh to, you know, that of the dead will somehow appease them. Right. Like, I don't know if it's like, cause, cause it's like, oh, they're lonely. And so we give them somebody to die for them. So that way they're together with a body like a mountain and eight heads mounted on necks, the size of tree trunks. It's blood red eyes alone were said to curse anyone who gazed into them. No one dared disobey the horrific beast. Ooh. Except for this one kid, real smart ass, like to talk back to the monster. We think that's why it cursed us. When the night of the sacrifice drew near, a mysterious white wolf appeared outside the village. This wolf, its coat as brilliant as snow, was dubbed Shiraunui. The wolf kept a watchful eye on anyone who ventured outside the village and made a habit of patrolling the streets at night. Aw, what a nice wolf. People assumed the wolf to be a familiar of Orochi. 
Little did they know, the wolf was actually an animagus and was from the Harry Potter universe. One villager took it upon himself to face the fearsome Shiranui. The warrior Nagi attempted many times to challenge the wolf. Fight me, wolf! Bark, bark! Don't bark, walk bark. away, fight me! Bark, bark! Dude, it's just a lost dog. But his attempts were thwarted by Shiranui's swift movements. Gotta go fast! No, no, no. Gotta go swift. Gotta go swift! Gotta get swifty. Before long, the night of the accursed festival had arrived. A white plumed arrow headed heralded the coming sacrifice. All right, everyone, I'm gonna fire this arrow, arrow into the air, and whoever it plunges into, you're the sacrifice. You know that's not a uh, that's not uncommon in a lot of uh, lore. Yeah. Yeah, they would fire arrows into the sky, and wherever it landed, if it landed on a house, that house was chosen by the gods. Oh yeah, no, that's totally what they did. Yeah. The home of Nami, the village's most beautiful maiden. Nagi, harboring a secret boner for Nami, was enraged by this sign. Oh, I'm so mad I get plus two attack! <laughs> Determined to put an end to Orochi once and for all, Nagi traveled to the beast's cave in place of his beloved. Oh, you thought you were getting woman, now you're gonna get sword! For some reason, Nagi dressed as Nami. The moon cave, a place as dark as evil Whoa. itself, served as... Look at that thing. Orochi's home, as Nagi stood bravely before the entrance. A beast appeared, eyes glowing crimson upon eight thrashing necks. Orochi stood tall before him, anxious for another sacrifice. Nagi leapt with incredible grace, swinging his blade valiantly. And on and on he sliced, well into the moonless night. But Orochi's hide was like steel. The blade left nary a scratch. The thing looks cool, like, like it's built into a shrine. Yeah. At long last, Nagi, his energy spent from the intense battle, Summon the dog. Oh, shoot! Dropped to his knees, fatigued and gasping for grip breath. He knew he was staring death in the face. I like the, the middle left one. It's all like, I'm gonna eat that! <laughs> but I'm not tasty! <laughs> it was then that the wolf appeared. As if to protect Nagi, it stood its ground before Orochi. In the darkness of the cave, the wolf's coat shone brilliantly. At last, it was Shiranui, the wolf that dwelled outside the village. That's a badass name! Yeah. The wolf that dwelled outside the village. Bearing its fearsome claws, Shiranui leapt toward Orochi. Orochi reared its terrifying heads, ra readying its fangs for battle. The two beasts struggled wildly, thrashing in the darkness. I love the uh, the the use of the white to the black to yeah. create like negative space. Mysteriously, mysterious and terrifying, the spectacle continued. Shiranui summoned gust of divine wind to counter Orochi's flames. What up? Get back, Tom Slice. Wind beats fire. As Orochi closed in on Shiranui, a sharpened, sharpened claws glistening. A gigantic tree suddenly sprouted forth, shielding the wolf. Shiranui fought gallantly to gain the upper hand, however. Orochi, protected by a mystical power, was not easily bested. Shiranui, covered in gashes, majestic coat dyed crimson, stood exhausted before the mighty Orochi.
Orochi saw a chance to strike what would be the final blow. But Shiranui refused to give in with its last ounce of strength. The majestic wolf gazed heavenward and unleashed a mighty howl. Suddenly, the black clouds overhead dissipated. The light from above glinted off Nagi's sword as a beacon of hope. Ooh. Guided by his sword, Nagi, who had been taking shelter in the shadows, stood proudly to face his adversary. Channeling all his strength into his scarred and battered arms, he leapt ferociously toward Orochi, his sword posed high, poised high. The golden sword danced in his hand like a puppet on a string. One by one, Orochi's fearsome heads separated from their owner. Oh, dang. I like how all the heads look slightly different, like they're wearing different helmets. Dude, there's a shredder. I know. Orochi's broken body collapsed in a lake of its own blood. In that instant, the curse that plagued the villagers was lifted. As the battle subsided, the sun shone once again in the sky. Shiranui had succumbed to Orochi's poison and struggled to breathe. Nagi scooped the beast into his arms and returned to Kamiki. When they reached the village, Shiranui was no longer moving. Aww. The village elder gently stroked the wolf's head. In response, Shiranui let out a hoarse and pitiful bark. Bark. Then closed its eyes and drifted off as if into slumber. That's the end of the game. Thanks, everyone. Good that game. was uh, Kami. Ah. Peace had at last returned to Kamiki village. In honor of Shiranui's heroic exploits, the villagers erected a, a shrine and placed a statue of the wolf within it. Wolves are actually a um, huge iconography in Japan. Oh yeah? Yeah. Nagi's sword was christened Tsukuyomi and placed inside the moon cave. The villagers all looked forward to an age of endless peace. Yeah, if I remember correctly, um... However, this is not the end of the story. There is more to this tale than most people know. One hundred years had passed since Nagi and Shiranui's ex heroic exploits. It happened so quickly that no one in the village even took notice. Uh, if I remember correctly, like all the native wolves in Japan have been hunted out. Oh, really? Yeah, they're completely extinct. There's only two that exist right now, uh, and they're not even alive. They're actually just like stuffed uh, animals. Oh, wow. Is this the legendary sword? Is this Tsukuyomi, the sword that banished the dreaded Orochi? It's a weird design for a sword. Yeah. No, it couldn't be. It's just a legend. Nothing but a fairy tale. So, oh, I'm gonna steal the- Oh, shit! I oh, fucked God. up! See? Later! That's why you always seal the sword, forcing them to get three mystical pendants that prove their worth to own it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there's the shredder. Going for a snack. Oh, he who seeks power. He who has broken my bonds. Speak the words. I wish darkness unto the world. Utter that prayer unto me and unleash my power. Uh, no, I, I just want to go home. Nah, bitch, you fucked up. 
No, 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 Netflix, they, they just came out with the new season. I'm gonna take off. Bitch, I'm a common. Netflix and chill. I ain't got no chill. I like the one head who slammed, it, who slammed himself into the bed. He's like, ow, when did that show up? <laughs> that wasn't there. I love how uh, the, 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 the dragons, like, but the Orochi is all like, you have to seek this wish upon me and then I'll do it. It's like, why don't you just do it? Why do you need me to do this for you? I don't know. It might be some mystical mumbo jumbo, you know? It's like, uh, actually, I'm, I'm a Jin. I'm a, I'm a Jin, dra drag Jin. Ooh. Ooh. Paws! Pupper paws! A horrible tragedy sw suddenly swept over the land. However, there was one village that seemed to escape the terrible curse. The tiny settlement of Kamiki village enjoyed the protection of a sacred tree. It is here that the real story begins. It'd be kind of cool. I don't know if this is the case. Bam! What? It'd be kind of cool, like, you know, you're kind of traditional RPG with multiple bosses and whatnot. I want to point something out to you real quick. Huh. Look at her boobs. Yeah. You see what they look like? Uh, like a peach? Yep. Okay. The boobs are a peach. Okay. Anyways, you were saying? Um, it'd be kind of cool, so, like, you have this, the, the Orochi who looks like he's going to be the final boss of the game. Uh-huh. Uh, but it'd be cool if, like, throughout the game, there's, like, seven other bosses, but each boss is one of its heads. So, like, you fight it, and you kill one of its heads, and, and then, then it, it like, and then returns he, like, to the body. Or, like, he just, like, retreats, and so at the very end, he only has his one head left, but it's, mm -hmm. like, the boss head or whatever. That'd be interesting. Yeah, it'd be kind of neat. I just find it funny that the, the their, like, imagery for the wood sprite is she's a peach. Yeah. How troublesome. This is just like the ancient prophecy of doom. Shit, that's a bad prophecy, yo. What has transpired to bring up such calamity? We must quickly. There is no time to lose. My power has diminished over the years I've spent protecting this area. I don't have much time left in this world. Amaterasu, now is the time. We have never needed your power more. Shine your divine line upon this broken and polluted world. Let your heavenly rays become our hope as you guide us all. How how fucking weird would it be if in our world, like in, in the world that we live in now, yeah. like let's say tomorrow, like all of a sudden all the gods from myths and legends appeared. Like literally just popped up. And we're just like, yep, we're here. We're yeah. gonna fix your shit. Fucking worship us or else. Right? That'd be crazy. Oh, yeah. Ah, such divine white light. Such beauty and grace. You know, it'd be actually kind of cool. Huh. It's actually got a neat story. So the same kind of deal, right? Where it's like, uh, the gods show up. Uh -huh. But like, so they show up, right? And it's like, Zeus and Thor and just like, Ganesh. But, yeah. Like a handful of gods from different, like, uh, uh, pantheons and stuff like that and they're all like fucked up and like damaged or stuff like that and mm -hmm. then we find out that like hundred like hundreds of years ago even thousands of years ago whatever all the god pantheons left because there's a great threat to the to the existence and so like they retreated to go protect us by yeah. fighting it in a war and they got their asses kicked basically uh -huh. and they come back and like yeah you guys are doomed I'm sorry we did our best yep. and then it becomes a story of like humanity having to rise up and battle whatever this great evil is coming down it'd be kind of interesting too because then like I can imagine like the gods would show up and they'd be like we, what little power we have left we will right. give unto you and so like as humanity like like essentially like relearns to worship these gods or, or you know live with these gods right. and like the demigods that are created through their power like we are also like battling this great evil that has shown up and like you know yeah and, and it's different though now because like now the great is like well you know I, I was prepped to fight earth you know 
four thousand years ago. Yeah. But now it's like, oh shit, Earth's got like fucking nukes and guns and shit. And we can and, even make like making semi sci fi, so there's like space travel or something yeah, like that. And now they have divine champions. <clears throat> yeah. So it'd be kind of interesting. That would actually be a really cool story, and I I, I would love to, uh, to to kind of see how somebody would take that. Come on, Jen. Come on, Jax. You can do this. Make our book thing. Don't tell us we're stupid again. <laughs> it's not cool. All right. All right. So we just got like rebirthed. The only one capable of such a wonderful, wondrous spectacle is none other than. Then our mother and the origin of all that is Amaterasu. How delightful to see that the savior whose brave sacrifice sealed away the evil demon so many years ago has not changed one bit. Bork? 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 You know I'm just a Seeing wolf, right? you emerge after so many years spent as a statue brings happiness to my heart. Sniff, 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 sniff. The dog's like, ugh. Uh, you know I'm a dog, right? Uh, I'm a Terasu? Gaze above you and take in the condition of the sky. Since your untimely departure from our mindset, this world has succumbed to devious and vicious beasts. And the ocean has frozen in time. They have ravaged our fine and bountiful com country of Nippon. But never have the circumstances been much worse than they are at this very moment. Oh Does my she have god. A butt window? Yep. She has a peach butt window. Please use your powers to banish the darkness and punish those who would do us harm. Hmm? Eh? What's this? I have a butt window. Has something stolen its way into my robe? Probably through your butt window. Oh, ho, ho. He, 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 he. <laughs> oh. What's going on? Jiggle physics. <sighs> what on earth? <laughs> you again. <laughs> I told you. No means no. <laughs> Oh, are you nuts? Boy, for a little thing, you sure make a big fuss. I was just trying to make the conversation a bit more... interesting? That's all. Were you napping in my clothes again, bug? Bug? I told you a thousand times not to call me that. I'm a wandering artist. The name's Isun. Okay. I'll show you just how great I am, and it won't be long till you're bowing before my great brush. <laughs> <laughs> this poor dog is like, what is happening? I am a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? Even cuter than the real thing. No. What's with you, furball? You look kinda down in the dumps. Actually, you look kinda familiar. Got it! You look just like that statue of Shiranui. Did he just eat him? Yep. Whoa! What do you think you're doing? Are you crazy? A handsome guy like me should never be covered in wolf slobber. You'll regret messing with the greaty soon. Don't make me use my prize sword, then Komaru against you. What the? See, what is happening? That's my great sword. Oh, 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 what's that growling sound? And why is it so dark anyway? Oh, great God, Amaterasu! I've used all the power I have to protect Kamiki Village. The village lives on. Their spirits lie encased in my fruit. Oh. Cut it free and the village will be reborn. I trust in you. I know that you will lead us down the right path. Only your awesome power can restore life to the world. 
The trees return to normal, huh? That Sakuya girl, she has said some weird stuff. Jesus. The villager spirits are being kept inside the fruit. That's the fruit that the girl said. If you cut it down, then the village will be restored. But it's awfully high up there. If you don't use some kind of special power, there's no way you're gonna reach it. By the way, that Sakuya girl, I'd like to take a bite of her peaches if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah! This darkness is really getting to me too. That's why I'm saying all these obnoxious things. A lot can happen while you're taking a nap. So I love the art style of this game, but mm -hmm. holy shit. Exposition? Exposition for days! And yep. like, it's exposition that didn't need to be exposition. Whoa. Well, as of now, exposition Ooh. has taken us 25 minutes. Wow. So, everyone, we're going to call this an episode, and when we come back, more Okami. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>